Now let's move on and try to unwrap a pretty complex object, which is this squiggly line here. Is it a number eight? Is it a diamond? I don't know. It's just a wiggly tube thing. And this type of shape can definitely be a challenge for beginners. So let's add some seams and just get started and see where we can go. Well, I'll hit two to go to edge select mode here. I'll just select a ring of edges because we need to split it somewhere because if it's just a complete loop, then unwrapping isn't going to do anything. So let's alt select this edge loop here, right click and mark seam. I'll turn live unwrap back on, U and unwrap. And that gives us a very strange and mixed result. Again, because we're not really splitting anything in the other direction. Uh, we don't have any edge loops going in this direction that are being cut along. And if you just imagine this as a piece of paper, there's of course no way you can lay this down flat uh, without making that cut. So let's select this edge loop or just whatever edge loop you think is best. Right click and mark seam. And there we go. So now we have a much better result. It's actually like laid down flat like a pelt and we could you know, move this around and it works pretty well. But if you're very OCD or perhaps you have to line this up exactly for uh, whoever's drawing on your UVs, then this might not be the best result because you might want to lay it out in a square grid. It's like really, really close to a grid, but it's still warped and kind of kind of messy looking. So it might be useful to actually just line this up perfectly. And the way that we can do that really easily is with the follow active quads command. Now you can find this in the U and unwrap menu in the 3D view, but I'm not actually going to use it here because it's a little bit confusing. Since it's in the same menu as like smart UV project and cube projection, you might think that it's just a different projection method. And I definitely made that mistake when I was first using it and the results were incredibly confusing because if I just, you know, use it, U and follow active quads, then we're going to get some very strange results. And even if you know what it does, uh, which of course follows the active quad, uh, just follows the lines of it. Let's say we pick one intentionally that looks like a good quad. Also, we want the UVs to follow, you know, in that direction and in that direction. Excuse my bad drawing with the mouse. But let's say we just pick that quad U and follow active quads. And we can still get some pretty nasty results. So what I want you to think about this as instead of an unwrap method is a UV editor tool. So let's just go back to our default unwrap U and unwrap here. And let's use this in the UV editor instead. So I'll go to face selection mode and here I do not have selection sync turned on. You could use it with it on, but it's a little bit easier here because then we could just select one of these faces, then select everything, right click and follow active quads. Now it's more apparent that it's just taking all of these lines and just extending them out. I'll use my annotate line tool and you can see that, you know, it's just following exactly the lines of this quad in all four directions. So in order to get this to align with the grid, then we just need to align these edges first. This is such a common task that Blender has a tool to do just that. So I'll go to edge select mode here in the UV editor and select this top edge, then right click and click align auto. And that'll align to whichever axis it's closest to aligning to. So I can either align to the X or the Y, or I could just click auto and most of the time it gets it right. Right click and align auto for all four of these edges. And now this is perfectly aligned with the grid. So none of the rest of these are, but it's okay. We just want one quad that is aligned to the X and the Y axis. Then we can select everything. And again, make sure that this is the active quad. If you're not sure, you can always unselect it and then select it again. And then right click and follow active quads. And there we go. Now we have a perfectly aligned unwrap and we can move this up and down and it follows along this tube exactly. Now the last two things I want to show you are add-ons and I'll put links to them below, but they are paid add-ons and I want to stress that by all means you do not have to use these. They're just something that I find saves me a lot of time so I want to share them with you here and I'm not getting like any affiliate links or anything like that. I just use these a bunch and thought you might want to know about them as well. But they're called UV Squares and UV Packmaster. So I hit Control Z and undo this. Actually let's just go back to our default unwrap by selecting everything U and unwrap. So we're getting this result here. Well, what we can do with UV squares is as the name implies, just select an island and click to grid by shape. And there we go. So instead of having to align a quad and then follow active quads just to that, we can just click to grid by shape and it'll do all of the work for us. The other option is to square grid. That's going to take this and make all of the quads square. 
Both of those are quite helpful options and I tend to use it quite a bit. So that's definitely a good add-on to use. And the other one, UV Pack Master, is for better packing the UVs. Let's find one example where it didn't do quite a good job. Let's say with this object here. Let's take these sides and make them seams. I'll alt select those edge loops, right click and mark seams. There we go. And as you can see, the default pack does a pretty poor job of using this space wisely. We can go to UV and average islands scale, UV and pack islands, and we can change the margin a bit. Maybe it'll flip it around for us. But as you can see, this doesn't really do a great job. We could easily figure out how to make a better pack just by ourselves. Well, UV Pack Master 2 allows us to just do this with one click. And this has saved me countless hours of time uh, just by having everything selected here and just clicking pack. And it finds a pretty good result. So we can adjust the margin here if we want up in the basic options. Click pack again, and there we go. So it'll give us about as ideal pack as we can possibly get. And to show you how well this works, I'll do it on Suzanne as well. So here we can hit tab to go into edit mode and click pack. And it doesn't do that much better of a job, but that's because there's not many possibilities here with this large island. So let's try a smart UV project that's gonna give us tons of little islands. This is more like what would happen if we unwrapped a hard surface game model. Let's set the angle limit to like 85. So we're getting some pretty weirdly shaped islands, but we can go ahead and just make sure everything is selected here and click pack. And by default, this is gonna give us a much better result. So as a comparison, let's go to UV and pack islands. And then turn the margin down. It does a pretty okay job, but you can still see that there's a lot of wasted space. Whereas over here, we're getting very little wasted space. Now, another option that I absolutely love here is that we can turn the margin off and instead use a pixel margin. So instead of it being a percentage of the image, we can set it to a set amount of pixels. So that's just under advanced options and under pixel margin. I know I'm going kind of in the weeds here, but we're going to talk about how important a pixel margin is later on in the course. So it's really nice that I can just set this to something like 16 and click pack. And there we go. I know for a fact that there's going to be a margin of 16 pixels around all of these different islands. So again, those are tools that you definitely do not have to use. However, they can definitely save you some time. I'll just hit U and unwrap to go back to my basic unwrap here of Suzanne. And then let's move on to the next lesson.